Well, the first modification that we're going to do to the Star Trek Next Generation pinball machine, I got this from Pinball Life. And we'll open it up here, and most of you will probably recognize what this is right off. And this is a Cliffy Neutral Zone Protector. So this is something that... Uh, I feel it's a must for, for any pinball game, really, if, if he makes one for your particular game. Uh, my neutral zone is, is getting some wear along the, the sides here, so, uh, but it's not bad enough to wear this protector. It's too late for this to work. So this ought to pop right in. Of course, it didn't come with any instructions, but no instructions really necessary. It looks straightforward. And it just has two little clips here that clips it on this side and of course the rear clip so I would imagine you you put the rear in first and then press this down and then these pop on the bottom and that should hold it in place so um, well, actually this would be the front side so uh, yeah put put this in and it should pop right down in place so that should be a uh, a welcome addition to help protect the neutral zone uh, the next thing we have and I got this from pinball life also is a brand new laser cannon kit now for the price which really isn't that bad when you think about uh, you get a new molded uh, cannon housing, uh, which is very nicely done. And it also has the prototype uh, domes on top rather than just the flat uh, red plastic that my machine has, which I think is what most of the production runs have. Um, but this, I believe, was how the prototypes were and if you look at a flyer you can see that it has the dome on the flyer so in the kit we get two of these plus we also get set of instructions which I briefly looked over uh, all clear nice color pictures with descriptions of uh, what you have to do to install it and of course you get the two lasers uh, with the wiring harness the uh, spacers and screws so that you can uh, ad adjust the laser by adding spacers and you might have to add longer screws if you want to raise it up or in the front or raise it up in the back depending on how you want that laser to aim and these are molded so that the um, laser emitter snaps right down in them and, and, and holds it into the housing so uh, that that's going to be real nice rather than you know a while back I thought about just getting some some lasers and, and putting them in the original housings but this would be a much better better thing and for the price you can't go wrong you know so uh, this is what we're going to do next we're going to install these upgrades since we now have the machine up and running uh, all the electronics and mechanics seem to be working now so uh, this will be our next project okay the first thing we're going to do before we get started on the laser cannons is to do a quick little install we have the Cliffy neutral zone protector and as you can see here uh, my neutral zone on the right and left side has started to quite a bit of wear to develop so putting this uh, neutral zone protector in should uh, take care of that problem so it should be real easy to put in first you have to get the front side down in there 
then you just pop the back side in and it snaps right in place so that looks great uh, that should prevent any further wear and uh, that's one less place I'm going to have to worry about on the play field. So that was real simple. If every uh, upgrade was that simple, uh, everything would be a piece of cake. So now let's get to the, uh, the next part of this uh, video, which is installing the laser cannons. All right, well, we're ready to start on this Star Trek Next Generation laser cannon kit. Uh, this instructions here says that copyrighted 2004 Mick Rogala um, and the kit includes two new enhanced playfield cannons with built-in laser mount, two lasers and component wiring harness, four small plastic ties, eight long cannon mounting screws if needed, two black plastic cannon base wire bushings, assorted nylon cannon adjustment spacers if needed and this instruction sheet. So uh, first of all he wants to remove the glass balls and anything loose etc and pull the play field straight back uh, leave down in horizontal position. Remove both cannons remove the slingshot plastics The removal of the slingshot plastics are not necessary, optional. Just be careful when routing the laser harness up through the cannon base and try not to move or bend the slingshot blade switches. Lift up the play field and place in upright resting position. Okay, so let's get started and uh, we'll get that much done. Okay, we started by removing the balls out of play field because later we're going to have to open up the play field and stand it up to hook up the wires underneath the playfield. So uh, we'll start on the left cannon first, no particular reason. The first thing you need to do is take the four screws that holds the uh, top of the cannon on, the housing. So we'll take these four screws off. just comes right off. So now what we're going to do I'm going to go ahead I don't have to but I'm going to take the slingshot plastic off because um, I do need to replace the rubbers on that too. So we'll just go ahead and remove those also. Now these have a nylon lock nut on them, whether that's in a, in a uh, plastic washer. Now whether that's factory I'm not sure. That's what came on mine on both sides, but uh, most of the older pinball machines usually have acorn nuts, but I don't see any on this game at all, so I'm assuming that they are using these now. Well, back then when this game was built. I don't know what to use on the new ones. Alright, that should be all. And we'll just lift it up over the post and they'll come right out. Now we'll go ahead and do the same thing to the other side, which is identical, so I'm not going to bother with filming that. We'll just 
work on this one side. All right, the next step, it says look at the left entrance hole for the existing wire harness that goes up to the cannon area from the bottom as shown with the red circle in this playfield top view picture which is right here in the circle and here it is right here and the existing wire and harness goes through this hole in the metal right here there's another hole on this other side here so what they're saying is that we need to uh, bring the laser wiring harness up through this hole and then bring it over here and feed it up through this hole in the metal base and uh, the reason we have to do that from the bottom is because this is the laser right here and the, and the harness and on the other end here it's got a piece of heat shrink and it's a rather large piece right here that won't fit through the hole and if you look look at it right here you can see it looks like the top of a capacitor and it's a little board in there a circuit board so it may even be a um, either that's just a filter or it could be a voltage regulator I'm, I'm not sure I know that the I'm pretty sure the cannon motor runs on 12 volt and um, I believe as we get farther into the installation, we're going to find out that these red and black wires uh, solder onto the motor wires, and the laser only runs when the uh, the gun turns are turning, so when the motor motor is running. And most uh, laser diodes that I've seen, I believe they work on five volt. So if I had to guess, and it's just a guess, I'd say it's a some type of five volt voltage regulator or something to cut the voltage down or it may just be a uh, some type of noise filter with that capacitor but anyway we're gonna have to go up through the bottom of the play field because this won't fit through the hole so we're gonna have to raise the play field up and come in from the bottom side okay well we're underneath the play field now and this right here is the motor for the gun turret and right above it is of course the gearbox which slows down the the turret to its uh, proper speed and it's kind of hard to see but right up here is the hole where the wires for the that's the wires right there for the uh, gun harness the wires that go up to the coil and the um, and the optos so what we're going to have to do is fish the laser up through the back side of this hole and we'll run the remaining wire right over here through the side here where the original uh, cannon harness comes out. That'll probably be the best thing to keep it away from the the uh, gun lever mechanism which is hooked up to the, uh, uh, the, the gear right here with this plastic uh, arm. So let's go ahead and carefully fish it up and it also says to be careful not to uh, pull on the, the laser wires so don't grab a hold to the uh, the laser itself and pull because you might pull the wires out of it so you always want to uh, feed it with the wires itself and once you get this on the top side grab a hold to the wires and pull it up don't pull it on the laser so let's see if we can figure out how to get this up in there. It might be easy to come in from this other side here. And yeah, maybe not. Ah, that's gonna be a little tricky. It was rather difficult to see, but on the right cannon, this is the wire that goes up to the uh, to the cannon through the play field. So this is where we have to put the uh, laser through. 
so. I can reach around the back of the play field here. And see if we can't fish this through. And I said to fish about five inches through. But it's easy, easy to just push down what you don't need, so I'm going to pull a little excess up through there. And uh, the original harness comes through this right here, so I'm just going to bring that and hook it in through the same group of wires. And that way we'll be able to run it right over here to the motor. Okay, well that side is done, now let's fish the other side in. Alright, the one on the left side is just a tad bit harder to get to. I want to get a good camera view on it anyway. But, let's see what we can do here. Let's see if we can get it. Started in the hole. Okay. Alright, we got it up in the hole. Now, the original wires come through underneath the bracket here, so we'll run this the same way. Should do it until we get ready to hook up the wires under here and we go finish the top side next okay now we have both of the laser harnesses coming up through the existing hole and it's on both sides here so the next step it says to Push up from the bottom of play field the laser with attached gray cable about six inches and then up through the empty hole in the metal cannon base shown below. Do not pull on the laser wire leads as they could pull out. So what we need to do is the original harness comes in through the hole on, the, on this side. On the other side is an open hole. So what we need to do is take the uh, laser and we need to run it underneath and bring it back up through this hole. It's going to be difficult to do holding the camera so let's see if I can get the tripod out. Okay, now maybe we can get this up in here. Shove it up in here. Bring it through the hole. Get a little bit of slack here. Now we can take this little plastic bushing, it has a slit on one side, so we can put it over the wire then slide it down over the gray wire and then slide it down into the hole. And that's just protection to keep the, the metal from chafing the insulation of the wire. All right, now we get to do the same thing for the other side. Then we'll go to the next step. Okay, the next step is to carefully take the, the laser and put it in the housing. And 
push it in place. All right, we got that in place now. So let's see what the next step is. All right, the next thing we need to do is go ahead and make sure we have enough slack here for the laser and have to make sure we tuck the wires out of the way and put the covers down over the cannon housing here. And we can go ahead and install the screws to hold the, the cover down. And later on, once we finish hooking them up and test them, if we determine we need to angle the laser uh, to where it falls on the play field as, as it turns in another position, uh, they have spaces you can put underneath these, either in the front or the back. But uh, for now, we're just going to put them on without any spacers. And at that time, we'll determine whether or not we need to make any adjustments. So we'll tighten these down. We'll just snug them up for the time being until we determine whether or not that's going to be the right angle. Alright, we'll do the same thing for the other side. Then we'll be able to raise the play field up and uh, the next step I believe is going to be to hook the wires up. Okay, one thing I noticed when we were underneath the play field here are the uh, switches for the that engage the uh, slingshot coils, the coil switches. You have uh, two switches on each slingshot, the right and the left side. You have the switch that energizes the coil when the ball hits the, the rubber slingshot. And then you have a switch right next to it on the other side of the kicker that is the switch that uh, for the score. So it scores some points uh, when, when you hit the slingshot. Okay, I noticed on both slingshots that the switch that energizes the coil, the rivets that hold it to the metal bracket had fatigued and broke off. And I actually found the, uh, the rivets and the spring tensioner uh, laying in the bottom of the, the uh, cabinet. So I've already repaired the one on the other side by knocking out the rivet heads in the bracket and uh, using some stainless steel um, 440 bolts and uh, socket head bolts and not on lock nuts. Uh, so I'm going to have to do the same thing over here on this side. And as you can see, here's the bracket and it still has the heads of the rivets in them. So I'm going to have to take a, a punch and come in from this back side here and knock these two brass uh, rivet heads out and then we'll be able to put the switch back in with screws like we did on the other side. So that's just one of them little little things that you, you run across sometimes. And um, like I say, if you don't have a, a new switch to pop in, it's nothing wrong with the switch, it's just the rivets holding it to the bracket broke. So we can just go ahead and replace it with the, the bolts and it should be good as new. Okay, well here are the socket head uh, screws and nylon lock nuts with washers that we're going to use to replace these broken rivets and that slingshot switch. And here's a little tip for you. If you ever need some of these small bolts and washers and, and nuts and whatever and you, you don't know where to get them uh, locally 
sure you can you can order them online anywhere pretty much but uh, a good source for hardware like this is your local hobby store and uh, that's my other hobby is radio control airplanes and helicopters and and like that so if you go to your local hobby store they usually have a good selection of different size bolts and screws and set screws and uh, a little bit of everything so that's just a little tip uh, if, if you run into working on a pinball machine or a video game and you need some really small screws of some kind check out your local hobby store they might have exactly what you're looking for okay well here's the bracket right here and the ribbit heads are on this side so we're gonna have to push them through this way so hopefully we're gonna try to see if we can do it without taking it loose from from the play field so we'll just take a small screwdriver and put it on the rivet on this side and that one tapped out okay now let's see if we can get the other one out okay both of them came out and they both fell down in the bottom of the cabinet there so we'll fish them out a little bit later and I don't think we really bent the bracket much maybe a little bit but that straightened it up so now all we have to do is put our switch back down into place and go ahead and put the the new socket head bolts and nuts on there all right first thing we need to do is fish the switch back in the, the hole where it goes back up through the play field. Now, because in the future maybe we, we want to be able to have access to these screws here to take this bracket off if we need to take the switch out, we're going to go ahead and put the uh, bolts in from this side so that the, the head will be on the back side of the bracket. If we put it in from the other way, then the excess threads and the, and the nut will be hanging on, on the outside here, and you might not be able to get to those screws. So let's go ahead and see if we can get, get them lined up here. And it's not easy to sort of get them lined up kind of tight quarters here. If I can reach through the top side here and hold on to the switch and maybe I'll be able to help me line it up. Well, okay, I dropped one of them. Let's try for another one here. Well, I finally had to do something I was trying to avoid to do. I had to wind up taking the bracket off the play field anyway. Uh, because once I put the, got the bolts in, after dropping a couple of the bolts and a couple of nuts, I finally found out that at that angle, I just couldn't get a nut driver in there to tighten it up. So now we've got the switch back on the bracket. So now we'll be able to just put it right back in through the playfield hole and put our two screws in and we'll have that problem fixed anyway. All right, let's see if we can get this back in. I really need to get me some magnetic nut drivers that'll hold these screws in, but we can make out. All right, there's one down. is our slingshot switch. Okay now that we're finished with the top side 
of installing the cannons. We had to raise the playfield back up. So uh, it says here to raise playfield and carefully route new wiring harness through existing wire retainers, working your way to the cannon motor. Be very careful with the component section of the cable harness. Do not squeeze, twist, or bend. And they're referring to the uh, black heat shrink on the end of the cable here, which, I, as I, I said before, you, I can see it's got a capacitor in there, probably some little circuit board, and it might be a, a voltage regulator or something similar. So what we need to do is route this with the rest of the wires and um, basically need to get it back up and go back up here with the motor wires. So we just need to route it through here. And we'll use some tie straps and we'll just tie strap it right on to the motor wires. The next uh, thing that we have to do after we secure the wires is either clip on, which is an option, or solder wires to the motor power wire input location, red to red, black to black, as shown below. So it, they have two versions you can get. You can get a version that is non-solder, which has alligator clips, where you just clip them onto the motor leads. Or the uh, standard kit is the, the solder on type. And I have the solder on, so we're going to have to solder the, the black and red wires onto the uh, end of the motor can. And basically, uh, that's it. We just have to tie up the loose wires with the plastic wire ties which come in the kit and uh, lower the play field, replace the balls, and uh, then we can test the cannons to see if we got everything correct. So let's go ahead and get the soldering iron out and we'll go ahead and wrap those wires and solder them onto the motor can. Okay, now we're ready to solder the wires onto the motor. I'm going to take and put a little bit of uh, liquid solder flux on the terminal. And we're going to have to be kind of careful because we don't want to unsolder the wires that's already on there. Uh, because it, it, I'm sure they're just regular soldered. Uh, and we may have to wind out, if we, if we can't get the solder to stick without pulling these wires loose, then we may have to just go ahead and unsolder them completely and wrap the two wires together, tin them with solder, and then solder them both on at the same time. But we're going to try to tack it on to the back side of these uh, without uh, unsoldering the original wires. We'll see how it works out. Even though these wires that came in the kit look like they've already been tinned. I'm going to go ahead and put a little fresh solder on them. Alright, now I'm going to start with the red one since it's on the back side here. It's like it's going to work for that one. Now, now, when you're working on soldering underneath like this, solder will tend to drop. So you want to try to make sure you're not directly underneath your work because uh, if that hot solder falls on your skin, you're going to know it. 
but I'm not going to tell you how I know it. Just don't do it. Okay, that one came off. So we're going to try to put those on at the same time. See if we can get a little bit of help here. Get us a clamp. Clamp these two wires together. All right, and that should hold. Now all we have to do is take our tie straps and tie these up. The kit gives you two for each side. So we're going to put one of them right here where the original one is on the motor. see for the camera but right on the back side where there's an, another tie strap the original tie strap is on the same wire and we'll come back and we'll clip those off but what you want to make sure is that you have all the wires are clamped up and none of them are, are running anywhere near this uh, geared mechanism here because you don't want the wires to get tangled up in, in the gears. The gears are actually in this metal housing but you still have your camshaft on the end that's, that's hooked to the lever that hooks to the gun turret so you don't want your wires to get caught up in that. Alright so now we can do the, the other side the same way and then we'll be able to let the play field down and we can give it a test. Now, well this side's a little different than the other side. The, the wires are run a little bit differently. Uh, they come out through the play field and run through this uh, plastic holder here. So I'm going to run it just like that and put a, a tie wrap right here. And I'll probably run the power wires down here and back up to the motor. And then I'll probably put a, another wire tie right there. So let's go ahead and solder these wires on. And we'll start with the, the negative wire here. Put a little more solder on here. Now 
let's get the red one soldered on. off. Let's see if we can stick it on there. All right. That should do it. Now, take the wire ties and first one I'm going to put right here around where the heat shrink is at the end of the, the wire Then the next one, I'll put right here next to the original one. Now we we'll just clip off the pigtail here. And that completes uh, wiring up the lasers to the motor. Uh, the next step says to turn the machine, turn on the machine to test the cannons. Uh, test 14 left and test 15 right to verify the laser alignment. The lasers light whenever the motor is on. If you want to change the angle of the laser, then loosen up the cannon mounting screws to determine if you want to raise the front or the rear of the cannon to adjust. So that's pretty much a, a, a setting to your preference as to how you would like the, uh, the laser to aim onto the playfield. So. Uh, the next step is to uh, put the play field back down, load the balls back in the game, turn it on, and uh, we'll put it in test mode and see how it works. Okay, well I've tested out the, uh, the cannons and it seems like to me they're aiming a little high, so I went ahead and I'm going to install uh, the plastic spacers on the back end to raise the back end up so it will aim the phaser uh, or the, the laser uh, down a little bit and still not convinced that's quite enough but uh, unless we add some more spacers in there that's that's all we can get for the time being so we'll uh, just go ahead and try it like that and see what happens and it may be all we need uh, so we'll give it a try anyway and see what happens so we'll go ahead and put the screws in I'm going to put them in this end first with the washers because I don't want the washers to slip out of place Washers back in the front.
tighten them down too tight because we are tightening on plastic but we want to get it snugged so now let's find out where it aims on the on the play field here actually not too bad. I believe I can live with that. Now let me try the one on the other side and see if it's about in the same position. Well that one is actually a little bit lower but I can I can live with that. So I believe that's going to do it. So uh, we'll go ahead and give that a try. Now I still need to put my uh, slingshot rubber back on and uh, and the slingshot plastics. Uh, so I guess I'll go ahead and do that next, and. Um, then we'll go ahead and, and fire up a game and see how it works. Okay, well, now that we've installed the uh, laser cannon kit, I must admit I really like the uh, the dome tops on the cannons much better than the than the stock flat piece of plastic. And uh, so let's go ahead and coin up game and and give it a try and, and see how it works. Welcome to the Enterprise. The probe has discovered nothing, sir.
Price range. Uh, you look around, uh, you can find it in a couple of different places. I believe it even sells them on, on eBay occasionally. So, uh, even though I'm not crazy about modifying my games, this is one modification that gets my stamp of approval. So, um, if you have a Star Trek Next Generation, I highly recommend to add the laser cannons.